Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm coming to you with another book review, and this time we're looking at a manga, and that is My Brother's Husband. So, this is a, uh, a manga series that's technically four volumes long. Uh, in English, you can either get it in these two hardcovers, which comprise all four volumes, or you can get a giant paperback edition that is roughly the size of, like, a Dark Horse uh, deluxe edition. And, um... It collect, you know, that'll collect all of the, the books in one. And it's a series that I admittedly probably never would have purchased. It was a thing that my ex-wife uh, had actually picked up and wanted to read because she thought the covers looked really cute. We always saw copies of the first volume at Half Price Books. And eventually one day, she when she saw two you know both volumes in the same place, she went ahead and bought them. And it took her a long time to get around, getting around to reading them, but one night I was sitting around and I was like, you know what, I'm going to read these because I thought maybe it would grant me more insight into uh, the issues of the LGBT. At that time, my best friend in the world was gay. And so I thought maybe it'll grant me a little bit more insight. And I never expected the incredible emotional journey uh, that this manga series would take me through. Uh, and what I can tell you right now, if you don't have time to watch the whole video, is this manga is a six out of five. It is incredible. It made me smile, it made me laugh, and it made me cry. And I'm not afraid to admit that even a little bit. This is such a beautiful story, and it very well might be uh, the most beautiful story I've ever read through manga or otherwise. So. It really has, you could argue, two main characters, uh, depending on your point of view. And that is a Japanese man named Yaichi and a Canadian man named Mike. Of course, uh, you know, Mike's niece, Yaichi's daughter, whose name, admittedly, I can't remember. I have a very hard time remembering names, so I'm very sorry about that. Uh, give me a second. Let me see if I can't. Kana. Her name is Kana. Uh, yeah, I'm terrible with names. But, uh, the story revolves around, in my opinion, Mike more so than anything, and Yaichi. Because Mike was married to Raichi's twin brother, who moved away from Japan and cut contact with his family after they wouldn't accept him for who he was after he'd come out. And he moved to Canada and met Mike, and they fell in love. And sadly, uh, tragic events caused uh, Mike's husband to pass away. And Mike had never met his brother-in-law or any of his uh, in-laws in Japan. And so after his brother's death, um, or after his husband's death, Mike decided to go to, uh, to, go to Japan and for the first time visit his uh, deceased husband's brother. Who, by the way, happens to be an identical twin. I believe uh, his brother's name was Ryoji. And from the immediate beginning, you could imagine how hard that would be to see the face of your deceased uh, spouse when looking at your, you know, your brother-in-law. It would be a very difficult thing to imagine. And he does have a, a small breakdown. And it's not really a spoiler. It's like in the first five pages. He does have a bit of a breakdown seeing him because who wouldn't? And so that really sets the tone for what kind of emotional story we're going to get. And initially, Yaichi is, you know, homophobic. Uh, I believe he even makes a comment, uh, something along the lines of, because uh, when Mike sees him and breaks down, he latches around and hugs him um, and even calls him by his brother's name. And Yaichi's immediate response is to shove him away and, and say something along the lines of, get off me, you homo. Something like that. So it kind of sets the tone of what we can expect. And he's apologetic afterwards. And so we kind of see the uh, the struggle with this man's traditionalism and his uh, preconceived notions on the morality of Mike's sexuality and by extension his brother's sexuality. And then when Kana comes out of the picture and sees this large foreign man sitting in her living room with her father, uh, she can't help but ask questions. And when she learns... That it is her uncle, um, who was married to, you know, her other uncle. 
she has a lot of questions, you know, the first of which, you know, being, I didn't know I had an uncle. I didn't know my dad had a brother. And the other one was, uh, wait a minute, men can marry men? And initially she, uh, she's told yes by Mike and no by her father. And when she's, when she's given this information, she questions things and she says, well, that's weird. And then her father's immediate response is to say, yes, it is. Imagine that, two men marrying each other. And she says, no, no, that's not what I find weird. I find it weird that it, you can do it in one place, but not in another. And so it really shows the innocence of the child's perspective on everything. And throughout the, throughout the story, we get to see Mike spending a lot of time with his niece and them bonding. And, you know, uh, they form a very close relationship. And it's a beautiful thing to see. And slowly we begin to see Aichi's um, bigotry fade away as he begins to become more understanding and even accepting of his brother's husband. And it's just a beautiful, absolutely beautiful story. And there's, there's moments in here which are incredibly, incredibly emotional. And there's also moments in here which are incredibly uplifting. And I want to talk about all of it. I could, I would love to discuss this story page to page, uh, but I want to keep this as spoiler-free as I can. So what I would say is if anything I said sounds remotely interesting to you, pick up this story. It is so incredibly beautiful. And if you do have any, any preconceived notions regarding um, sexuality in that way, you know, then all the more reason to read it um, I think that it might be able to kind of help open your eyes to what it is that they go through and how they're really no different than anyone else. Uh, but also, it's just a beautiful, uh, a beautiful story to enjoy, even if you are a supporter. Uh, really, it's a story, in my opinion, for everyone, uh, except potentially the most homophobic people out there. <laughs> um, and I don't frankly give a damn about those people. So... Yeah, uh, there's, if I talk any more about these books, I'm going to spoil every detail of the stories, and, and I don't want to do that. So, yeah, uh, I would recommend picking them up. Like I said, if you're an English speaker, you can get them in these two hardcover Tonkabons, each of which collects two volumes for four volumes total. Or you can get a giant uh, paperback the size of, like, a Dark Horse Deluxe Edition or a... Um, What's that other one? The Attack on Titan Colossal Editions. It's the same size, the same trim size as those. So you can get it all in one that way. Just make sure it'll fit on your bookshelf if you go that route. Uh, and even if you're not a manga reader at all, if you, I don't care. Even if you're not a manga reader, reader at all, pick these up. It's worth it. I mean, the quality is great. The artwork is extremely cute. Like, I mean, look at that. It's very, very cute. I will say this: if you're not a, uh, if you're not familiar with manga, it, you read it from the back, and then you read it right to left. So you would read each panel right to left. Think about it, everything about an American comic or Western comic, but in reverse. Uh, that's how you would read this if you're not familiar. But yeah, beautiful editions, very nice cover arts, cute spines. And then all the information you need on the back. Highly recommended. It is a 6 out of 5 star read. It is, like I just said, possibly the most beautiful story I have ever read. And so I would strongly, strongly recommend it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And until next time, I will see you later. Peace and take care.